So now that we've established how to set a view layer, let's set up a panel that would give us options to change the view layer depending on some user input. The easiest way to do it is just going to be with a display collection list because it, it just easily displays lists of collections. So um, one parameter that it is going to need is a custom property called an integer and this is just for indexing the collection. So you'll see why in a second. We'll just put this over here. And what collection property do we want to display? Well, for this instance, we probably want to display the data for the scene and the view layers. I think you could use another context, but I know this works, so I'll just use this. And we're going to get a display collection list for each of our entries. We know that we've got two view layers and there's two view layers showing, but we just want to define what is shown. So we'll grab a display property. And if we come back over to um, view layers under scene, so scene view layers, and under, if you just go to any view layer, it doesn't matter which one, all view layers have a property called name. So we can paste that in here. Now we grab the context for the name of view layer 001, but if we change this to property, we can have it be dynamic. So when it just whatever comes into the socket, it'll grab the name of that view layer. So we can say for every view layer that gets displayed in this collection list, each item grab its name and show its name. So now we've got an entry for each of our view layers it's displaying their name. We turn off in boss it will just look a bit better so what's happening here is we've got an index and when we click on an entry this index is changing this is zero this is one and if we had more entries then it'd be zero one two three four but whatever's active is um, what this index represents and that's what the value is coming out of this socket so let's say we want to change the view layer depending on what's selected here and it will change the view layer up here. Well, we know for a fact that we're going to need a set property. And I like to work backwards like this. Um, it just helps me figure, figure things out. First I find out, you know, what I want to do and then I figure out all the information backwards, you know, where to get it from and all that sort of thing. So we know, for example, we want to set the property of the active view layer. And if you watched my previous video, then the active view layer is going to come from the window view layer. So we'll grab this. We know we want to set that. And we want to set it to whatever is selected here. So when this is selected, this is saying index 1. And when this is selected, this is saying index 0. So we can choose what view layer we want to set it to. So let's jump over to our Blender browser. Let's go to scene view layers because this is where our scene view layers context is. And we're just going to grab any view layer, it doesn't matter at the moment. And we can change um, this value down here to either target by name we specifically want to target view layer 001 and set it to that. No, we want to choose index. So for all the view layers have an index. And we know that this is the index of the view layer that we want to set. So we can plug that into there. And we can plug that into there, change this to a property. Now there's only one more step. When this updates, we need to trigger this set property. And this is where an update um, node comes in handy. So this property here has a on property update node and whenever this property changes it's going to execute something and output its value. So new property that's the integer, new property that's the integer. So now if we plug this into the set property and we switch this over to here just to make things a bit cleaner. We've got, when this updates and it's changed, 
then it's going to set the property of the view layer to whatever's selected in the index here. So view layer one or zero is selected. Second one is selected, index one. Could also do this another way where instead of using a display collection list, we could use a for loop Let's um, just reuse some of these nodes and we'll just get rid of that. Let's say in our panel we want to for loop, oops, we'll need an interface. Um, so in our panel, let's for loop over all of the view layers and display just for example, for now, just a quick label and we want to display the items. So. Those technically are the proper names for the view layers according to the serpents and the ID that it has given and whatnot. But we can get the names of each one of those and display them. So now we've got just a simple label being displayed and in the label we've put the, the string value which is showing the names. If we want to be able to select something from here and not just have it a label, then we might just want to use the display property um, which won't really give us an option to click on and change apart from just changing the string when emboss is on. So if we were to make these clickable, they'd have to be a button of some kind because we're not using the display collection list anymore. The display collection list is easier for this sort of thing because you can just set that up um, depending on what index comes out of the, the index for the display collection list. But for this one, we'll have to do something a little bit different. We need to attach a button to each one of these items. And just for the name, we'll plug the name in. So now these are clickable items. And we'll need an operator And we'll need to link this operator to the button. So now whenever this operator is pressed, something's going to happen. And each button has an index attached to it in the for loop through this one. I'm pretty sure. So what we could do is reuse our set property over here. And we could say when a button is pressed, we want to change the active view layer to something and in this case, it's going to be the button with this index. So if we click on this one, whoops, click on this one, no, I4922 is not defined. Okay, what's well not defined? Um, okay, so we have a bit of a problem where operators, when they take in um, information this is technically coming from an external source that doesn't exist within the operator okay so what we would need to do is create um, an integer that exists within the operator and pass it through the button um, it's going to sound a little bit complex but once we do it you might get an idea of what's happening here so we create a property of an integer type on the operator and it, what it did is it created an input through the button. So now instead of passing the information around into the operator and getting that um, for loop error, what we can do is we can pass that information straight into the button which is associated with this loop here and then from here we can pass this into our information within the operator. And what we'll need to get this value is a serpents property node. And we're going to say on the node in this tree, we want the operator. And in that operator, there's an integer value. So now if we pass that into the view layer, we should be able to click a button and it'll change to the first view layer. We click this button and it changes to the second view layer. So that's a little bit of a quirk with for loops. If you're trying to pass information from a for loop 
over into an operator, you sort of need this little input gateway that will pass the information through. And it is the same with also doing like a, an interface function. And, and I'll just type in function interface run. Oops, let's go run function interface. So if we were to have this attached to like a panel or something, and you know there's stuff happening over here um, within our function, we would also need to supply an input where like um, let's just grab a I don't know material index or something. When we pass this in as an integer and we change this, you'll see like um, within the function you'll need to pass the information through the, this little gateway sort of thing. And you couldn't just have, you know, this attached to something over here, then be running a function in between it all because it'll it'll um, break the, the connection. So that's what these little gateways are for. I don't know what the correct term for it is. I'm calling it a gateway just to represent, you know, what it does. So again, like you can't just pass information from a for loop into an operator we need to pass it through this little gateway and that's how you do it. So hopefully that gives you a bit more of an understanding of um, how you would set up some buttons and link an index, you know, use an index to sort of define what each button that's being displayed for each view layer and how it's going to relate and what you can do with that information afterwards. Um, yeah, so hopefully these little examples help, and yeah, I'll catch up.